Okay, so we are finishing assignment seven, and I finished up my project a little while ago. And this was the finished project. It's processed, it has at least one shot with three layers of depth, this one here, out of focus, in focus, out of focus. This one has two layers of depth, you even got little robot dandruff there, very nice. And then this one is pretty much even focus, but it, it pulls away a little bit. The focus is blurrier back here. It's mostly focused on this front robot. It's processed with color as atmosphere. It's all arranged. What I want to make sure you understand is if you don't have good focus in your exposures and you want to build more dramatic focal depth effects, as long as what you have in your exposure is too much focus it's easy to blur it out and we've talked about the past using the blur tool directly the problem with the blur tool directly to blur it out let me get my layers here so this is just a little recap because my photos didn't need a whole lot of focus augmentation which is good it makes the project really easy but it doesn't doesn't show you all the things you could do so let me make a duplicate of my background if I use the blur tool at a strength of 100% with a nice big brush, and I, what I want to do is maybe blur out the background more and blur out these glasses, you can do it, but you hardly even notice that it's doing anything because it's a very slow tool. So the only way I can usually tell, and I'll let it catch up with me, is to turn off and on what I just did. And you can see that that's a, that's a very direct way to take focus down. And it might be helpful because the sharp focus on those pins and stuff might distract from what I want overall. Or the focus on this wood here, maybe I just want to take that down a little bit just for clarity. Your camera lens loves to focus, especially automatic settings, on contrast. So anything that's high contrast, it's going to tend to, to capture that a little bit more clearly. And if it distracts from what you want, you can even do a focus vignette. You know, where just the edges, like the blur on this wall, or the, the reflection of my muted flash on the wall is a little distracting. You can blur those out. All right, so all of that makes sense, hopefully. There we go, that's what I want. Ah. Okay, now, what are some of the other methods, though? What if I want to do the same thing? I'm just going to go through them really quickly. I can do lens blur, I'll duplicate the layer, I'll go to channels, and I'll make a new channel where I paint a gradation that goes from the foreground to the background, kind of matching the depth of my photo here. You see how this is closest to me, and as it pulls away, it pulls away slightly at an angle. Then I have to make sure I select RGB uncheck the eyeball for the alpha channel layer but it's there I go to layers and then I can go to filter blur lens blur and my source for the depth depth map will be alpha channel one and I get to set on that gradation using this focal distance tool where I want it to focus so there it's focused on the feet Everything else gets really blurry. I have the radius of the blur really high, just so you can see. But if I want it to focus instead right here, it will focus blur behind that and in front of that, you know, using this depth. Now here's the problem with it. If I want to focus on the robot, notice that if I click at the knees of the robot, only the knees of the robot are in focus. The feet are out of focus, the top is, whereas that's all one depth from the camera. So that doesn't make that much sense. So I'm going to say OK and show you how I can augment that. 
that's why I did it on a duplicate layer and then I can use my eraser and simply a nice soft eraser pretty big high opacity I can simply erase out the robot from that alpha channel depth map layer so if I wanted to make this robot more pronounced and in focus on top of that out of focus background this is one way I could do it so it's the opposite of using the the blur tool I'm actually using eraser to bring back sharpness after I've blurred it and now everything that's on the same depth as the robot should be in focus so the glasses the writing on the paper even the stuff on the desk at that same depth from the camera but everything below it now or behind it is definitely more blurred out and that's you know that's an effective way to to mimic a focus pool and it looks like that you know basically kind of cut out around that creature now the reason I wanted to show you this is I just saw a tool I've never used in Photoshop there's so much and I'm gonna try to figure it out right now so I have the alpha channel which gives me a depth map I have layers I made a duplicate now of my background I don't have my alpha channel one anymore I'll erase that and I'm gonna try this new filter under blur called field blur or it's new for me and what I want to do is figure out how to use this so field blur is based on points anchors that you give it and you can set at different points a kind of echo of Gaussian blur I do not know if there is a way to link field blur to your alpha channel so you get that extra depth map and Shane did you think that there is a way to do that there well used to be it's okay changed significantly I was messing with it earlier there used to be a way to anchor it well let me show you how the the anchors work so if I wanted this clock to be out of focus I'd set an anchor there and it will kind of radiate from the clock it will radiate out and I can use this wheel to show how much I want it to blur Right? I could use the wheel or I could use it right here. Then you have a few other subtle settings like the iris blur, the tilt shift. Tilt shift is made to match miniatures. And it's funny how they automate all these things now. But they're just different games you can play with aperture to give different visual effects. Tilt shift makes it look like it's a miniature that you're shooting. Even if it's not a miniature. All right. So field blur is kind of nice because you can you can plot different points. So if I wanted it more out of focus back here, I use field blur and I set different anchor points all over the place or I move them. And in order to keep the robot from getting too affected, I might set around the robot for it not to be out of focus right even though it is out of focus in other places so they're like little spheres of of focal influence <laughs> that you can adjust to your heart's desire you see like warping the just that edge and that can be pretty helpful instead of having to erase away now ultimately this feels a lot like water damage right like what happens to inkjet prints if you drop water on them and they'll just blur in selective areas so you have to really understand your depth map a little bit better to make it work because it won't make sense if your robots in focus and at the same depth are your glasses but your glasses are somehow out of focus but that's why I always do this kind of thing on a duplicate layer so that when I need to bring that focus back the only thing the computer can't do 
is sharp in focus, but it's really good at taking it away. I can just reveal it. So there's lots of great tools to help you play with focal depth as long as you have enough focus in your original exposure. But the ultimate control, no matter what tools you're using, is to be able to make duplicate layers and then erase away from them. And I think I do like the one with the, the field, the field blur a little bit more even than the, um, than the lens blur. In this case, I'm able to make kind of a halo of focus. That looks a little artificial there, so I might use a lower opacity eraser and get him back a little. Anyway, our goal is for things not to look way over-processed, and that's why I also do them on these duplicate layers so I can push the opacity back a little bit. So just little things to keep in mind. I'll call that a field blur demo. All right, but now, well, that's going to be the last thing I say about assignment seven. But now the next demos I'm going to give are going to be about making things print ready. And let's say you finish this assignment, you really like how it looks. You want to make sure that it prints as well as it looks on screen and that it just makes, makes you proud in your print portfolio. And one thing you can do is just check your size on your finished PSD or your finished TIFF and make sure it's large enough. Make sure it's at least 350 pixels per inch and large enough for the mat opening that you're going to use. Either 8 by 10, 11 by 14, or 12 by 18 inches. And once you have that, you can make it print ready. But I'm going to give you a little bit of background on why 